In today's episode, we'll be talking about early EU history from the world wars until the European community, so let's get to it. When the first world war ended, it was dubbed the war to end all wars. After this war, nobody would even think about fighting another. World War II happened. It saw the deaths of over 50 million people, the Holocaust, and millions left without homes. This war changed world politics. After this war, all European powers were forced to give up their lucrative colonies over time and lost their status as world powers. After this war, an iron curtain split Europe into two opposing factions. After this war, the threat of nuclear annihilation hung over everybody's head. Europe could no longer afford another European war or else it might be turned into a smoldering crater. So how could the leaders of Europe somehow prevent this from happening again? Winston Churchill came with the answer, create a United States of Europe. The first step towards this goal was set out in the Schuman Declaration in 1950. It stipulated a plan to combine Europe politically and economically, starting with the coal and steel industries. Why coal and steel? Because they were the backbone of war. They were needed to build tanks, ships and guns. If these markets were combined between countries, it would tie your war production directly with that of your enemy. This made war not only unthinkable, but also impossible. And this union would have to start with the two biggest rivals in Europe, Germany and France. And so in 1951 they signed the Treaty of Paris, a treaty that would mark the beginning beginning of the European Union. Four more countries answered the call of peace. Along with Germany and France, there were the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg and Italy, forming the European Coal and Steel Community. The Coal and Steel Community reduced tariffs on coal and steel, increased the trade of these goods tenfold between member countries, and created over a hundred thousand jobs. But it also had its failures. One of the goals was to create an integrated energy market, not just for coal, but also to include oil, gas and nuclear. But they only achieved collaboration on nuclear. The European coal and steel community wanted to prevent large corporations from dominating the coal and steel markets, as this had helped Hitler rise to power. It did so by preventing cartels from forming, and while this action did assure lower prices for its citizens, large corporations still emerged if they were simply more competitive than their rivals. As the years passed, it became clear that the coal and steel community was becoming outdated, and two new ideas sprung up. France wanted to create an atomic energy community so that the six countries could work together to generate nuclear energy for its citizens. Germany, Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands wanted to create a common market where goods, services and people could be exchanged without tariffs or border controls. So how did they reconcile these two ideas? Well, they did both of course. The European Atomic Energy Community oversaw nuclear energy and the European Economic Community or EEC oversaw economic integration. The EEC's first goal was to create a common price level for agricultural goods and create a customs union. You might be wondering, what the hell is a customs union? Basically it means that the trade barriers between the six EEC countries would be removed on certain products, but if anyone from outside the EEC wanted to trade with these countries, they would be paying the same tariff in each country. So let's say for example you are a French baker who wants to sell your croissant to Germany. Well just for crossing that border, your customer has to pay an extra tax, a tariff, just for buying a French croissant. But with the EEC, that tariff was removed between the two countries. There would be no extra tax to pay for your croissants and you would pay as much as you would for a German croissant. It also meant that if for example an English baker wanted to sell his croissant to either Germany or France, then in both countries the same tariff would apply, meaning that neither country had a disadvantage based on import taxes, thus making it easier for companies to do business in the EEC. Over the years Europe became ever closer, economies became more interconnected, governments worked together and trade between the countries was increasing. But there was one person with whom this development just did not sit right. President Charles de Gaulle, the war hero who led the French government in exile during World War II. De Gaulle was a French nationalist and he believed France was handing over too much power to the EEC. You see, up until this point, whenever countries decided for more integration, the six EEC countries would give authority over such matters to the European institutions, basically creating a sort of European government. This was facilitated by the USA and the United Kingdom who helped guide Europe towards more integration. And it's especially this last part that did not sit well with the goal. Why would the UK, a country in decline who was losing more and more of its colonies every year, and the USA, a country an ocean away, determine European affairs? The goal proposed a new course for Europe. The UK, USA and NATO would have no more power in Europe. Power would be taken away from the EEC and turned back to the governments of the member states. And France would
would retake its role as the superpower in the world by dominating this new Western Europe. You can see how the rest of Europe was not so eager to replace the USA with France. Yeah, did you notice how half of Europe is gobbled up by this giant superpower right across our border? We need NATO. Stop trying to rule Europe. After years of negotiations, President de Gaulle pulled out of the EEC in 1965, practically shutting it down. The EEC needed a unanimous decision on any action it took and without France there would always be one vote missing. So the countries of Europe did what they do best, compromise. They agreed that France would retake its seat on the EEC if 1. Any EEC country would be allowed to veto any EEC plans if it was a very important national interest even if the majority voted in favor. 2. Create a common agricultural policy in the EEC that set the prices for fruits, vegetables, sugar and cereals. And 3. The EEC must ask approval on certain important topics from the member countries themselves. And so, the idea of a united Europe had overcome its first obstacle. Come back next time to see how Europe moves forward and watch as the European community expands to other nations. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, press the subscribe button. I will be making 5 more videos about the European Union, and then I will be doing videos about other interesting topics. This video was made in collaboration with My Country Europe. If you want to show your support for Europe, head over to their page by clicking here and see what they are doing.